Bismillah, alhamdulillah, peace be with you. You turn it into the Deen Show every week. Alhamdulillah, we're here to help enlighten you because knowledge is key. Knowledge, you got to have knowledge. And when you have that proper knowledge, you see that you now have developed a certainty in Islam. You know that Islam is indeed from the Creator. It's not an organized religion by man or men, but it was sent down, organized by the Creator who created man and woman and everything in this universe, the one Creator, Allah. Now, let me tell you this now. You're probably wondering, look, I've accepted Islam. I agree with my very nature that I'm not going to worship anything in creation but the Creator. And everyone say Allah, Muhammad is the last final messenger. And this would obviously include Jesus, Moses, and all the preceding messengers. I'm going to pray five times a day, minimum. I'm going to do the five pillars without a doubt. Why am I going through these hardships still? Tell me, Eddie, why? I lost you know, my job, I'm having problems, tough times. I'm a Muslim, and I'm going through all these troubles and hard times. Explain that to me. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this week's show. So it's very exciting. It's a very exciting show. And hopefully at the end, you'll have a different perspective with my next guest. Surprise, when you come back here on the Deen Show. Don't go anywhere. As-salamu alaykum. Peace be with you. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. People can go and visit your own section at thedeenshow.com. You're known for the program that we did on Happy how to be happy, we discussed that, and that's at thedeanshow.com. This week, here on The Dean Show, we're going to be talking about also another very important topic, and that's what we known for, is really important issues, clearing it from the minds of people who have doubt about it, hopefully God willing, making it really crystal clear to end. Good and evil, many people, they say, okay, look, if there's a, if there's a God, specifically, uh, we were talking about someone comes into Islam and now they're going upon hardship upon hardship. Another person says, if there's a God, why is there so much evil in the world? How do we tackle this? So I mean, the whole concept of trials, tribulation, tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does it really work if I truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why did this happen? I truly believe that every Muslim should know this basic knowledge before even moving any further into the deen, as this is something that everybody faces. No one of us, not a single person of us, except that they will face hardship. Isn't that right? Yes. Allah says in the Quran, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah will test you to know who has the most sincere and correct actions. Life was never meant to be comfortable. Life was full of hardships. Life sometimes going to cause your life. Life sometimes will cause you to bleed, to cry, and be sad, and so on. But at the end, this is just a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'll mention two reasons why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send us these tests. So please give me your undivided attention and yes. all those who are watching. Mm -hmm. Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to go through testing, tribulation, hardship, etc.? Number one, Allah does so to distinguish the truthful from the liar. Simple test. For the true colors to appear when someone goes through a hardship. Don't you agree with me? Yes. So, some, so one, at one time I was in the masjid, and this is a true story. Right before Isha prayer, I was walking and I accidentally stepped on someone's white puma shoes. Mm -hmm. He got so upset, he's like, you stepped on my new white puma shoes, you know what? I'm not going to pray anymore. So whenever testing happened, this is a test from Allah. He Allah. literally said, "I'm not," because you stepped on those white. Left, yes, he left the masjid. I'm not praying anymore. I'm not praying anymore. He, he left He's only hurting himself now. Absolutely. So that test came to show mm -hmm. the truthful from the liar, to show the one who is strong iman from the weak iman, etc., etc. Allah said, "What's your proof, brother?" Allah says in the Quran, "Alif Lam Mim," three letters that no one really knows the meaning. Some scholars give any meaning to it, but the opinion that we follow, the, perhaps the majority, is that Alif a letter, Lam a letter, Mim a letter. Then Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يَفْتَنُونَ Do the people think that they will say, I believe, and they will not be tested? You think it's that simple to go to Jannah and ultimate happiness in Jannah, where Allah will tell you, I am pleased by you, where you will enjoy all these bricks of gold and silver, which your house is made out of this, and you enjoy your spouse in Jannah, and the mall which you will visit every Friday, and the breeze that will come to you, will make you more and more handsome and beautiful, and most joyful thing in the whole existence of a human being is the moment they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that just like that, without no testing. We never argued the driver license test. We never argued the drug test from a corporation. So number one is Allah test us to show the truthful from the liar. True colors appear. The second reason some people would ask, what do you think, Eddie? We never planned this out, by the way. I want to ask you a question. What do you think would be the follow-up question to this? So Allah came to test us. Okay. What would some people ask afterwards? What do you think? Please tell me. Doesn't Allah already know who the yes, truthful yes, yes, from the yes, liar? Yes, 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 that's a good point, yes. Is it, doesn't Allah already know the truthful from the liar? Mm -hmm. And that's a very valid question as long as it's asked with respect and so on. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second reason, Allah says in the Quran clearly, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَكْنَا 
And if we were to torture, punish those who we've never sent a prophet to, no deen show video that tells them about Islam, there's no da'wah, there's no conveying of the message, and we punish them before that message was transferred to them, they would have said, why did you punish us? Lawla arsalta ilayna rasula. Shouldn't you Allah first test us, send us a prophet? And then we would have never failed. We would have been protected. So Allah, the second reason Allah tests us, pay attention. So Allah can judge me and you and all the viewers according to our actions and sayings and not according to Allah's previous knowledge about us. So I went to, I was a teacher at uh, Islamic school, which is sometimes one of the lowest paid jobs ever, but it was beautiful, alhamdulillah. There's nothing more beautiful than Eddie than calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The True. highest, noble, most noble job ever is when you call people to Allah, yes. not an engineer. I'm an engineer by profession, I do it full time. But above that, I say they're a doctor, but above all is those who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waman ahsanu qawla, Allah says, who is better? Waman ahsanu qawla mimman da'a ila Allah. We ask Allah to make me and you and all Ameen. those that would share this video amongst them. Ameen. Ameen rabbil alameen. So I was a teacher in Islamic school, and I can predict people's marks. And maybe we, without even being a teacher, you might re live the example with me. So I would say, you know what, Sarah, you most likely will get this mark. You know what, Ahmed, you will get that mark. So can I give people an F without testing them? What would happen afterwards? What do you think? That would be unfair. They get like, oh, I, I, that's not fair. Test me. Give yeah. me the exam. You can't put it on your, my report card. So once I give them the test, lo and behold, they got the same exact marks I predicted. Not that I know the unseen, but just an educated guess. So number two, Allah would test us. So we are judged by our actions and saying that not about Allah's previous knowledge about us. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So now when we go to Qiyamah, Day of Judgment, Allah, we will, He will not hear from us. Well, you know what? Oh, you never tested me. We are all tested. So you know, go there. You don't go there and complain. You didn't test me. So Allah sent messages to you. Allah has given you all, all these da'wah, YouTube videos. Allah has given you all these avenues. It might be through a pamphlet, whatever it may be. So you cut the chase. No more arguing. Mm -hmm. So number one was what? to show the true colors, the truth from the liar. Number two, so Allah can judge you according to your actions and sayings and not according to Allah's previous knowledge about you. So these were the two core reasons why Allah allows us to go through hardship. And pay attention, Allah tested, tests you according to your level of deen and iman. How about I will go on deeper into that because that's very important after the break. What do you think? Yeah, let's do that. Sounds good? We're going to go deeper into that question, talking about hardships, why are you experiencing them, all this and more. We have the answers in Islam. And we come back here on the Dean Show. What are you going to do with it if somebody's been trying to deliver something to you? Like we've been trying to deliver the truth. That there's only one God. That you worship Him alone, not His creation. Welcome to the Dean Show. One of the most exciting purpose of life talk shows in the world. Since 2006, The Dean Show has been working on clearing up the many false misconceptions about Islam and Muslims and at the same time delivering the simple message of the purpose of life in a fun and exciting way. One time I was at a restaurant, I was dressed like this and a woman came to me, she said, are you a rabbi? I said, yeah, I'm a black rabbi. You know? We want you to develop a better understanding about the pure Islam and the real message that it teaches. Peace, submission, surrender and obedience to Almighty God. To disbelieve in any one of the messengers of God is to disbelieve in all of them. Islam says love all mankind, that's why we're sharing this message because we want the best for you and we want the best for all mankind. We'll see you next time. God willing on the Dean Show, continue to tune in. Peace be unto you. Please subscribe to the Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support the Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on the Dean Show and we're talking about hardships. Continue on, you wanted to elaborate on a certain point? Yeah, so the level of hardships. So know that there are brothers and sisters in Syria being killed. There are sisters being raped. There are people all around the world, whatever Muslim country, non-Muslim country, are believing brothers and sisters are going through a hardship. That hardship is of levels. How does it work around? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says an authentic hadith, remember sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes, is that a man came and asked him, Ya Rasulullah, man ashaddu nasi bala'a? Who are the people that are tested the most? I was asked that question, by the way, when I was younger, about grade 9 or so, and I was thinking the answer to be Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh was so evil, he deserves the worst of hardships. The Prophet's answer was what? Al-Anbiya, meaning the Prophets, are tested the most. Then he says, Thumma salihun, then the righteous. Thumma al-amthal al amthal So it keeps going down. So the Prophets are tested the most. You want a proof of this? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time his wife Aisha was complaining about a headache. So the Prophet, she said, what sah well, my head. The Prophet said, no, actually, my, I have a bad headache. Then he says, every pain a Prophet goes through, my pain is double the pain of any other human being. They were tested the most. 
Then it goes down the level. And I love that next part. And the Prophet ﷺ says, يُبْتَلَ الْمَرْءُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ دِينِهِ You'll be tested according to your commitment to your religion. فَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ صَلَابًا If your commitment to your religion was strong, what will happen to the testing? It'll go up. It'll increase. No, no break. Go even to the next level. زِيدَ فِي الْبَلَىٰ وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ رَقَّىٰ If they were a softy, the white puma shoes, step on it and they leave the masjid, what will happen to the test afterwards? خُفِّفْ It will be taken lightly on that person. It will not go to the next level. So now when people are tested more and more, rather this shows the level of iman they may have. That's one of the signs. Naam. One of the signs to show how much iman they may have. And only Allah knows exactly. But one of the signs is how much hardship you go through. So with this being said, this is the commitment to your deen. Some people, brother, let me be very frank, don't see that. And Allah is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise. Allah knows what's behind that wall. Allah knows what's behind that camera. And all what we see is just this much. I'll give you an example. There's a sister that emailed me. It's a true story. Yeah. And then she sends in an email. Right away, I want to commit suicide. Why? I don't want to commit suicide. You're the last person I'm going to communicate with, etc. Then I reply back during my lunchtime at work. And then I, I say, you know, I, why do you want to commit suicide? What's the deal? She says this email. She says, I liked this guy when I was 15 years old. I loved him more than anything in the world. Loved him for six, seven years. She's 21 years old. And she said, I kept making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. Ya Allah, please give me that man. Ya Allah, please give me that man. And guess what happened? This man got engaged to someone else. Mm -hmm. She said, I want to commit suicide. I felt so depressed, etc., etc., etc. Why that hardship? Why, why, why? Because she didn't get the man of what because, she perceived yeah. was the man of her dreams. Yeah, she said, this is the man I want. This man looks good. He's amazing. I made dua. Why Allah didn't accept my dua for yes. Well, guess what happened afterwards? She says, well, Allah, Allah is my witness. She says, Alhamdulillah, brother, the brother did not get engaged to me. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Why? So this is sometime later now? That, yes. Sometime after, after the brother got engaged, yeah. this is sometime later, she says that brother was found in the club. Mm -hmm. That brother was found drinking alcohol. Alhamdulillah, Allah did not make that man get married to me. So he ended up possibly being an adulterer now, yes. fornicating and cheating on his wife. Absolutely. So this would have been her now. Yes, she says, now she's thankful. So, that, so now it was a blessing. Yes. But the question is, did you have to see the effects to be thankful? Why you got to go through that now to see it? Yeah, so you, now you appreciate, like, I'd rather go through that hardship than marrying him and go through that torture. So Allah gave you a present, actually. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you. Yeah. Raise your ranks. And then to go to the next level, Allah would wipe away your sins. Mm -hmm. Some people say, okay, Allah tests me, brother, I heard your, your, your roles. So number one about the testing, the true colors, okay, I got that. Then the next one, when Allah tests you, and the hardship that you go through, your sins are being dropped. You're being nice and clean because Jannah, paradise, is sin-free. Mm -hmm. You can't go to Jannah when you have one single sin, you gotta be clean. Yeah. So sometimes we don't do enough worship, Eddie. We don't worship Allah enough. We're not as sincere enough. And Allah wants you not to go through hellfire. Doesn't want you to get tortured in, in the grave. So Allah gives you these hardships to purify you, like a tap. So Allah doesn't, not, Allah never intends to harm you. Never. Allah never hates you. Allah loves you. And Allah loves you by you going through, through these hardships. A parent, a father, relates wisdom to himself by yeah. saying, I'm going to give one son $20, the other son $10. And you'd say, Baba, that's not fair, that's not fair. But the father says, I know the one who I give 20 will know how to spend it. The one who I give 10 doesn't know how to spend it. We should relate wisdom to Allah, Al-Hakim, the All-Wise. He knows mm -hmm. who to give. Some people, Eddie, are poor because that's the only way for them to go to paradise. Yeah. Some people, Allah made them rich because that's the only way for them to go to paradise. Otherwise, it will not work out for them. Yeah. Allah just gives and takes and all these hardships for a reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when all these deeds are being wiped away and cleaned, every thorn that hits you and pricks you, sins will be falling off. Every pain, until Rasulullah says, Tamshi ala al ard, you walk on earth, start having a single sin on you. Yeah. Allah Akbar. Uh, when I opened the show, uh, when we first started, there was this common statement that if there is a God, mm -hmm. then why is there so much evil in the world? How mm -hmm. would you address this? So if you noticed, if you noticed through our, our talk, we can use some of the content by saying, that person perceived it to be evil, perceived it to be bad, just like that girl, just yes, like that sister. Yes. And you know, what, you know what the sister said afterwards? I didn't finish the story for you. The, for, to continue the example, now she liked another guy so much, and she says, this guy is so religious, so practicing, and she said, I make dua to Allah all day and all night. But wallahi, if Allah doesn't bless this man to me as a husband, I'm going to commit suicide. Again. Again, what's wrong with you? Allah showed it to you. So you don't perceive it as Allah is evil. We seek Allah's refuge. We never attribute such negative attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Allah is good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy is by default. He's merciful by default. He said, Rahmati, my mercy, sabaqat ghadabi. My mercy overcame my anger. When Allah by default is so merciful. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just to show Allah's mercy and Allah's not all about evil, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to express how merciful Allah is. And Eddie, just, just imagine this. Before we even were created, before we, you came to life, before I came to life, our father, Adam alayhi salam, was made and shaped. And there was no soul blown into Adam yet. It's authentic hadith. The hadith says when Adam alayhi salam, the soul, Allah blew the soul into Adam, when ruh, ruh is the soul, reached the head, what happened to Adam alayhi salam? He sneezed. Then Adam alayhi salam, when he sneezed, and now into life, he said, Alhamdulillah. Now pay attention, the first word the Creator will ever say to the creation. The first word the human being will ever hear from the Creator. What is it? Yarhamukallah. May my mercy be upon you. May Allah's mercy be upon you. If this is the beginning, then what's the end? Yes. Allahu Akbar. Look at the end really quick. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah has how many mercies? A hundred mercies. A hundred parts. And He allowed only one to descend on earth. From that mercy, every single one of us has mercy towards the other. When we go and give someone water, when we go help our parents, when we go and pick up something from the ground, the mercy between the animals, to that extent, all that mercy is from what? From that one single mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet says what? Yawm al-Qiyamah, Day of Judgment, that mercy will be joined with the rest of the 99. Allahu Akbar. To an extent, the mercy will be spread all over their place. There's a hadith that has some slight weakness to it. Shaytan, the devil, Iblis, who knows he's destroyed and he's the evil one. Iblis is the evil one. He sees all that mercy on the day of judgment, the one mercy combined with the rest of the 99. He says, okay, what about me? You know, I, I think I can make it for how merciful Allah is on that day. But Iblis, Shaytan, will never obviously go there. But the point being, Allah is by default very merciful and we do not attribute evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to take a break. Sure. And we'll be right back with more on this very important topic here on The Dean Show. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show and we're talking about and giving some advice and, and looking at the wisdom. So how should a people when a calamity hits, a hardship hits, and now as I opened the show I said, look, this person just accepted what's in their very nature is nothing worthy of worship except the Creator. I'm not going to worship anything but the one who created me, the one I'm going to go back to, my Maker. That's who I worship. And I'm going to follow the last final message that was sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We got the blueprint, the Quran and Sunnah. Now a person's doing, you know, the acts of worship and now a hardship upon hardship. And should they be excited about the relief coming because doesn't Allah say, look, that that where every difficulty comes ease. So do they just hold down a little bit longer and not give up? Because what happens if you give up? And what happens if you hold on? Absolutely. So the calamity hits you mm -hmm. right away. What's the first thing? The first thing you call 911. Yeah. But our 911 is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Before you call 911, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for you. So the first thing is you, you be patient. And the very nice statement that the Prophet teaches me and you to say, Inna lillahi wa inna When mm. the calamity falls, to Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. This is one of the things that we say. Remember these statements. And the very important is to be patient. The Prophet said, As-sabru inda sadmat al ula Meaning, the true patience are to those who are patient the moment the calamity hits upon them. Mm -hmm. Example, there was a lady in the graveyard. Yeah. And then the Prophet says, you know what, take it easy, hold on, etc. Don't exaggerate and so on. The lady said, you don't know what I went through. But she does not know it was who? Prophet Muhammad so when, she was, when the Prophet left, wise man, I want to go into argument, and he walked by. Then the people told the lady, you know what, that was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he spoke to. She felt so bad. Then she went to him. And the Prophet said, a sabr, patience, true patience, is the moment the calamity hits upon you. Now you kind of recovered, but you won't get the full reward of that test. So Allah goes you through a hardship. You want that reward of hardship, sins being wiped away from you, elevate your status in paradise, you've got to be patient in the beginning. And know that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, badu eri, nothing is coincidence in Islam. There's nothing, oh, by mistake. Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Everything was perfectly done. Everything is decreed upon. Well, this ha thing happened here, my marriage here, this and that. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed all this to happen. And we should trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a, a, a story where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told uh, Abu Salama. And uh, Abu Salama learned that statement, which is very profound. And the statement says, whenever a calamity falls upon you, Allah tells me and you to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa akhlif li khayra minna Three statements To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return Number two, O oh Allah reward me for the hardship You want the reward And number three is Give me something better 
a substitute that is better than what I lost. Someone lost a child, someone lost this and that. This, guess what happened? Umm Salama, when she heard that from Abu Salama, her husband, when he, when he told her the hadith, she said, okay, I'll say whatever calamity falls upon me. Guess what happened? Abu Salama dies. Umm Salama says, when my husband, my beloved, my sweetheart, and those that know the seerah, the Prophet's life and biography, they know that Abu Salama and Umm Salama had the most beautiful love story among the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. When her husband died, she remembered what that statement her husband taught her. So she said, okay, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un to Allah, we belong and to Allah, we shall return. Allahumma ajuni fi musibati. O oh Allah, reward me for the calamity. The last part was what? Give me a better substitute. Then she says, who in the world can be better than Abu Salama? Who in the world can be better than Abu Salama? She, she was struggling. Then she said, you know what? I trusted Allah. There's something good behind this. Ah, it's difficult. She said, okay. Wa akhlif li I know Allah, give me something better. Not too long after that, someone knocked at her door. A man. He's like, yes. He's like, I came on behalf of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi What's the deal? He wants to propose to you. Allahu Akbar. He wants to propose to you, Umm Salama. Umm Salama cried. She says, Allahu Akbar, the one who fulfilled that promise and gave me someone who is better than Abu Salama, who is Muhammad Sallallahu So know there's wisdom behind it and you might not see it and you might die without even seeing it. But definitely the, the good ending is in the afterlife where we realize things. Let me touch something about dua if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we make dua, 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 Ya Allah, this hardship, Ya Allah, this hardship is falling upon me. Ya Allah, help me from it. And Allah continues to put you in that state of hardship. And you just don't understand what's going on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever you make dua, what are three things happen? Number one, Allah would lift the hardship from you, for example. Okay, Allah will move that calamity away from you. Or Allah will give you whatever you asked for. Number two, Allah for a wisdom, which He knows about, He will not fulfill the request that you had to Him. Rather, He will move away some, another calamity that was about to smash you. Yes. So remember that dua you made in grade 10 when you had the crush towards that girl? And you said, Ya Allah, get me, get me married to her. Remember that time? I did not give it to you because for a wisdom that Allah knows best. So 10 years later, Allah saves you from a calamity because of that dua 10 years ago. So number two, Allah would lift that hardship away from you. Number three is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would save your reward to Jannah. Because that's where you need it the most. On Yom Qiyamah, Brother Ali, the only currency exchange is hasanat and sayyat. Yes. Billions and dollars and uh, loonies, which is Canadian uh, mm -hmm. dollars, uh, yen, pounds are useless, Ali. Nothing, meaning, means nothing. The only currency exchange is the hasanat, the good deeds, and the sayyat, the bad deeds. So on that day, your dua, the, these hardships will be put on the scale of al-qiyam, the judgment, where it elevates your status, and you're so, so thankful to Allah that Allah has given this all to you. Imagine, just imagine that scene with me. Allah, we know as Muslims, there is mizan, which is a scale yes. that Allah will scale your good deeds, right? And the bad deeds, etc. Imagine you go there, you see your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds. How, how depressed would the person feel? There's no way out of this. All that sadness, all that depression, all of a sudden, you see maximized the good deeds coming on the scale, smashes all the bad deeds, they're gone, they're wiped away, they're vanished. Why? Because of the hardships that you faced. Because of the dua that you made, and Allah never gave it to you. The day you needed the most was that day. So then you become thankful for whatever you went through. So there's something to comprehend when Allah allows you to go through hardship, there's good behind it for the believers. Now, there's a lot of good behind it. Just be patient, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you mentioned, Eddie, in the beginning of your talk, knowledge is key. Knowledge is key because without knowledge, Without the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can people realize to be patient? They have to yeah. know there's a reward behind all of this. There's mm -hmm. a reward behind all of this. Just be patient. And Allah has a nice plan for you, but you just do not understand it sometimes. Uh, before we cut out, we're almost out of time. It reminds me of a, a beautiful hadith. And this is the blessings of, of having this knowledge that you can fall back. It's an anchor point. Now, a reference point you can go back to and you can remember these hadith, these examples, and it helps to motivate you to stay with it. Mm -hmm. One that comes to my mind is of the two people that the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, had talked about. One being a believer, the one who believes in the pure monotheism, believes in the one creator, all the prophets and all, etc. what comes with that belief. And then the one who just denied, a disbeliever. And the believer now having everything, uh, the disbeliever having a mountain of money and gold and silver and kicking it in this life, right? And then the example of the believer who went through so many h hardships and tough times. And do you know which hadith I'm talking about? I got, I got a couple of hadith for you for that yeah. one. Can you go ahead? I'm, gonna, I'm just uh, starting it off. Absolutely. And it just gives an example. At the end, this person who Allah gave him everything because some people perceive that this person is so happy because he has all the material things, but he disbelieved. And okay. the other person who had such a hard time, but at the end he gets Jannah, and that person is like, did you see any hardships? And Absolutely. he's like, no. Can you go ahead and explain Okay, Bismillah. So I, I got two in mind really quick. 
actually make it three inshallah and we conclude afterwards if, yes. if, if we have time inshallah so number one Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says ajaban li amr al-mu'min the prophet says amazing it is a state of the believer not MBA everything amazing happens here yes. the prophet is telling you something is amazing and when the prophet says something is amazing it is what? absolutely amazing with this being said he said the believer's state is absolutely amazing everything that happens to them is good for them if something good happens and they are thankful that is good for them like a khair and if something hard comes upon them and they're patient that is good for them so but you might understand the wisdom behind that number two Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the one who has been going through all kinds of hardships rather the prophet used the exaggerated example the one who faced the most hardship on earth ever all that tragedy the troublesome etc they'll be dipped in jannah for a split of a second split of a second not even there's a dip and come out and that person will be asked have you ever seen any hardship in your life you know what that response will be i don't know what you're talking about for a split and the second into jannah that person forgot all the hardship then the Prophet says, yeah, to be an'am ahl al-ard, the one who has been blessed with all kind of materialistic things, cars, whatever it may be, money, mansions, fame, whatever it may be. You'll be dipped in how fire one dip, and you'll be asked, have you ever seen any good in your life? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Dunya is just something, go, it's a snapshot, very quick, back and forth. And remember, Rasulullah for those who had this question, if Allah will not reward, for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, does not like the believers and the way they disbelievers, sorry, and the way they're behaving. What does Allah continue to give them? I'll tell you something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this is istidraj, which means Allah is just dragging them. The Prophet says, whenever someone is insisting on a sin, being advised, he told, don't do this, don't do that, and they insist, then Allah would continue to give them from the dunya. Don't think that this is Allah's blessings on them. The Prophet said, no, that is istidraj, means they're dragging. Just like how you have a mouse in the house. You have a mouse in the house, you want to kick that mouse away, you say, shh, shh, kick it out, whatever. If the mouse doesn't go away, what do you do? You put food, food for that mouse. You put food, which, which means the mouse will stay. But there's a rat trap. The mouse comes to that cheese, and then when it comes, it smashes it. So when Allah gives the one who insists on the sinning, don't think because Allah loves them, but that's a dragging. And all of a sudden, baghta, they get smashed. We seek Allah's refuge from that. Ameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allow me and you among those, who are not just dipped in Jannah, but stay in Jannah forever in Amen. the highest ranks. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the brothers and sisters who are watching us going through hardship. May Allah make them patient. May Allah raise your ranks, wipe away all your sins and elevate your status in Jannah. And allow you to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who faced the most hardships ever on earth. Barakallah fikum. Thank you very much. We uh, end with the uh, greeting that we started with, the greeting of all the prophets and messengers. Peace be with you. Thank you so much. Walaikum salam. And there you have it, this week's show. Thank you for tuning in. And we got to learn so much. So hopefully we can get, get implement it. We got answers to a lot of those questions. And if anybody had any kind of doubts, hopefully, God willing, it got cleared up, eradicated from your mind in this week's show. We know that the Creator, Allah, tells us in the Quran, do you think that you'll be left alone? I'm just saying that I believe. No, and that's it. No, you're going to be tested. And we're all being tested. I'm being tested. You're being tested. And sometimes the test is very difficult. Sometimes it's easy. But we ask that the Creator makes it easy and that we can be in Jannah and we can be successful in this life and the next and we ask that we get rewarded for all these trials and tests and we never give up. That's that trust that we have to develop, that we have certainty in the reward that's waiting for us and that we have certainty that the Creator, Allah, is merciful towards us and He doesn't wish any harm upon us and we have to trust in Him. So at the end, we can have His mercy and at the end, we can have His pleasure and at the end, we can have Jannah that's right, Jannah, paradise is the ultimate goal. So with that said, continue to follow us, be with us here every week on The Dean Show. Until next time, until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.